Uh, kia ora everybody, my name is Mai Tita. Uh, I'm an organic grower from Kapiti. Uh, yeah, I'm an organic grower from Kapiti. Um, first time I've talked in front of the audience before, so I'm pretty much petrified. <laughs> Um, yeah, the topic of, of my talk tonight was, was going to be biogenic living, but I um, really struggled to find 20 images, uh, high resolution, re resolution images of um, biogenic living, so I've sort of morphed it into serendipity in the art of biogenic living. <laughs> okay, so serendipity uh, means happy accident or pleasant surprise, or the definition I like is to look for a needle in a haystack and come out of it with the farmer's daughter. <laughs> Um, I spent my life, after, when I was 15 I left school and I was a, uh, a television technician apprentice and I spent a lot of my time with a head in the back of a TV not knowing what I was doing. Um, I didn't realise at the time but it was quite soul destroying. And then I ended up getting in a little bit of trouble with the law, just a little bit, and I got a bit of community service. Um, I cheekily went across the road to the Department of Conservation and I asked them if they had any work on, um, on Whale Island, which is a, like a wildlife sanctuary off the coast of Whakatane. And I ended up getting flown over by helicopter and planted trees for three days. And um, I realised then and there I didn't want to be in a TV workshop anymore. I didn't want to be indoors, I wanted to be outdoors. So I went to university and studied horticulture. Um, <clears throat> when I just about finished my degree, I hitchhiked down to um, Nelson to pick apples and two people picked me up on the way. Um, different people and they both said, you need to go down to Lincoln University and see Bob Crowder. So this is a, um, he was a pioneer of the um, organic scene in, in New Zealand. And uh, when I walked onto that property, um, I, just, I got goosebumps and I actually I just about cried because it was just so beautiful. I'd, I'd spent five years working on conventional properties and it was all nice and straight and this was chaos, but it was harmony, there was flowers and birds, butterflies, crops within crops, and that moment I went organic. Um, spent a few years travelling around um, working on different enterprises and I finally ended up in uh, Golden Bay, Antarctica. And it was there that I realised that I think I was about the only person in Antarctica that had a full-time job. <laughs> no, it was true. <laughs> and I sort of wondered, well, what can I do to change, uh, change my life, stop working out to five and work for myself? I didn't have a clue then. I met a man and he, he said, you should read this book and it was called Biogenic Living. Um, and it was written by a man called Edmund Zeckerley. Um, and he, he was a linguist and he got into the Vatican and um, he deciphered a lot of the ancient texts, including some of the Dead Sea Scrolls. And uh, he was writing to the Essenes, who were this um, ancient group of mystics that lived around Syria and Persia and Egypt and that. Um, apparently they lived to the ripe old age of about 120, but uh, I can't verify that fact. Um, but in that he talked about, um, about biogenic food. So bio means life, genic means generating, so life generating food. Um, and it was things like uh, nuts and seeds and legumes and whole grains, things that are, are dormant, but once you stimulate them to, to germinate them, they go pow. And I've got a whole lot of energy that they release. Um, Sunstroke is called prana. The name of my business is Prana Greens. So it's about, um, it's about food that actually generates life within us, or um, at least stimulates life. Um, a lot of minerals, enzymes, stuff like that, that can actually keep us healthy. Um, he's, he also talked about uh, wheatgrass. Now, he wasn't into drinking wheatgrass. He thought it was too potent. Um, <clears throat> but he was... Hang on a second. I've forgotten what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, okay, wheatgrass. He, uh, wheatgrass uh, releases more energy than what it needs to sustain itself in the first 10, years, uh, 10 days of its life, uh, like a, a forest or a houseplant. They've only got enough energy to sustain themselves, whereas wheatgrass, um, it releases energy. So he advocated having wheatgrass growing around your house. And I used to have little punnets of wheatgrass and sit with it when I came home from work. And it, it felt really good, really revitalising and re-nourishing. Then I had a friend uh, ring me up from Wellington. He owned a couple of juice bars in Wellington. And he said, can you grow wheatgrass? Um, Nick Minnett, I'm in Wellington. I've got a, <laughs> I've got a wheatgrass business. Uh, I did a bit of research. Uh, I was really into just living greens and stuff like that. Um, these are sunflower greens which I've just started growing. Um, but one slide that is about to come up, it's, it's about chlorophyll and, and uh, hemoglobin. Now chlorophyll is a green part of the plant, 
um, hemoglobin is, is the blood, and as you see, the atomic structure is virtually identical. Uh, the only difference is the central atom in chlorophyll is magnesium, whereas in hemoglobin, you've got iron. But if you look at the whole atomic structure, it's pretty much the same. Um, so when, you, when you're taking chlorophyll or, or wheatgrass juice or even just eating greens, you're really nourishing your, your body and your blood. So I um, had the wheatgrass business and I just started mucking around with a few seeds that I had. Um, I, the, this man Edmund Zickley also talked about bio, uh, bioactive food, which is one level down from biogenic, so it, it's, it's, it um, sustains life. It doesn't keep life generating, but it sustains it. And then he talks about another couple of groups of food where um, they can actually slow your life down, and then the, third, the fourth group of food which can destroy your life. So I'm really into, into nutrition, I'm really into growing plants, so um, I started growing this stuff, and I used to call them uh, living salads. And then I, I started showing them to, um, to chefs around Wellington, and, and one guy said, mate, these are microgreens. And I realised there's, there's a whole industry out there. So I've started, um, I grow this stuff. I mean, I've got a lot of these shots as, as a sort of revolving screen saver because, I mean, I look at this and I just want to jump in there. It's, it's just so lush. And, <laughs> and when I hold up, hold up my punnets of wheatgrass, oh, sorry, of, of micros, they're like little forests, tiny, it's all, it's almost like, it's become more of an art, like in my greenhouse it's more like a, an artist's palette, you know, the different colours and, and textures and, and stuff like that. I, I slipped in a quick slide, um, actually the one after that, um, the next one is, is more about the artist's palette, I'm just a bit ahead of myself, but anyway, there's a guy I heard on national radio and um, biogenics is also about decentralisation of food and he talks about that most of our food, especially in the cities, comes from way up from the city, I mean these days we're buying um, garlic comes from China. Somehow, I'm not quite sure how he does it, he managed to get hold of empty car parks in cities, and in this slide, he's in Vancouver. He puts down shipping pallets, and he um, makes these huge big gardens just out of shipping pallets, and you can actually pick them up with a forklift and move them if you need to. He feeds, us, well, some people in the city with it. He employs 15 different people in his business, um, and his people with, uh, like, mental disabilities, alcohol and drug problems, stuff like that. Um, I'm pretty excited about that kind of stuff. I think that we really need to be producing a lot of the food within the city rather than bringing it from overseas. My last slide, uh, this is the baby leaf living trays that I, I grow. Um, it's about living food, it's about vital food, it's all tastes good. Um, and if you want any, come and see me at City Market. Thank you.